Yes and no. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I felt defeated, like, because I, I, I was struggling. I'm like, I don't, like, I'm still working to build clientele. I'm staying with them. So that's completely different, staying with somebody that, you know, I, we just met. And mm-hmm. we're building a relationship. We're building a friendship. And so that was weird. But, I mean. It had to there, be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, at times for sure. Welcome to the Tissue Box Podcast. I'm your host, Pam Jordan. Welcome to another episode of the Tissue Box Podcast, where we peel back the layers of creativity and dive into stories that shape us. And today, we are absolutely thrilled to have a guest whose artistry not only enhances beauty, but tells a story with every brushstroke. Victoria is her name, and she is a visionary in the world of makeup, and she's graced us with her presence today. She's not just a makeup artist. Victoria is a true entrepreneur and an acclaimed author whose work has captured the attention of the prestigious Vogue magazine. That's right, I see it in. And her journey from passionate creativity to professional acclaim is nothing short of inspiring. And she absolutely inspires me. Victoria's makeup is more than just surface level. It's a profound expression of identity and emotion. With a palette and a brush, that's all it takes. She transforms the human canvas into a complete masterpiece proving time and time again why she's considered one of the best in the business. Beyond her artistry, Victoria has built a brand that empowers and inspires, venturing into the entrepreneurial world with the same grace and innovation she brings to her makeup work. So grab your tissues, because you're probably going to need them, not just for the beauty tips that might move you to tears, but for the heartfelt stories of resilience, creativity, and success that Victoria is here to share. Join us as we delve into the colorful world of makeup maestro who paints dreams into reality. Welcome, Victoria, to the Tissue Box Podcast. Hey, girl. Hey, girl. <laughs> that was beautiful. I never heard nobody like, that was very descriptive. Oh, that is all you. I want to send you that. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is all you, though. Oh, thank you. And That's so you know what? I, I'm, I'm so honored because, you know, we, we, we've shared a friendship mm-hmm. and you are that girl oh, that does the you. makeup. You see this right here? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She did it. And I trust her. With with every stroke, everything that she does, it's a total masterpiece, and I'm not even lying a little bit about that. So again, I am so thrilled to have you here today to talk about your journey. So where did the makeup where did the makeup journey begin for you? Mm, so for me, it began when I was little. I feel like I've always had a love for makeup. Um, my, I remember my grandma bought me this like makeup. Like, you know how they used to have the little sets where they would have, like, eye like the three eyeshadows? I remember that. Yeah, so she bought me one of those. <laughs> and, like, it was really crazy because she bought it for me, but she wouldn't let me wear it. Like, so I'm just like, well, I can't wear it. Yeah, it was one of those. So I was sneaking wear it to school. So that's where, like, I knew, like, I had a love for makeup. So I've always had a love for makeup, beauty, all the things. And, you know, she started letting me wear it when I was, like, 16. Um, and from there, I actually went into doing hair. As like a side gig, because I used to do my own hair, and then people asked me to do their hair. And then from there, I just got tired of doing hair. And so mm-hmm. I was in college, and by that time, I was watching a bunch of makeup videos on YouTube, and I was getting into doing makeup. I had done like people's makeup. Like, I spent my senior like prom day like doing people's hair and makeup for prom. Really? But yeah, I hated doing hair. I did. I hated everything <laughs> about it. I just did it because I knew I was good at it and I was making good money. Okay. But um, I knew that I loved makeup. Make, makeup was your passion. Yes, makeup was my passion. Okay. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so you started doing it like in high school, you said? Yeah. And and then you said to yourself, you know what? This is my thing. Yeah. And, and, and this is what I want to want to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So where where did your big break come in the in the makeup industry? Where where did your break when 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 you took it to another level? Take me there. 
Oh, so I don't know. This is like a breakthrough moment, but I had a moment. This is how I knew I wanted to do makeup. I was willing to drop out of school on a full scholarship to do it. <laughs> I really? was, yeah. I had a full scholarship to college, and I just got tired of doing that. And I just like whenever I like envision myself doing something, I always envision it like at its highest. Like so, I already. This is what I told my grandma. I was like, basically, I'm gonna drop out. And I felt like within a year, I was probably going to be doing Beyonce makeup. I was going to be living in New York. And <laughs> That's what you no, said? No, I was, I was so serious. Like, dead ass. Really? I was, well, oops, I don't know if I should have said that. But, <laughs> no, what I'm saying? No, I, I legit was going to be doing Beyonce's makeup in New York. So, yeah, that's when I knew, like, this was something I love. Um, yeah. I mean, that hasn't happened yet. Um, <laughs> I'm, the, still the, the I'm still working. Makeup, no, not yet. Yeah. I'm still working on it, waiting on it. But that's when I kind of knew, like, oh, this is what you're supposed to be doing. And that was, I wouldn't say that I had like a, I have moments like of gratitude when I do makeup mm -hmm. because it's just like I realized how far I've come with doing it. But I don't know that I felt like, oh my god, this is my breakthrough. Like I've arrived or like I've made it yet. Like I don't mm -hmm. feel like I've had that yet. No. So this is interesting to me mm -hmm. that that you tell. Your grandma, your, your grandmother raised you. Yeah. Uh, and you tell her, I got a full scholarship to college, mm -hmm. but I'm going to drop out because I'm going to be doing Beyonce's makeup one day. Pretty much. So what was her reaction to that? Oh, she was pissed. <laughs> she was pissed. I mean, she was supportive. She just didn't understand. So it's not like she was, like, pissed. She just didn't understand because I was, like, the first to go to college. And so that was, like, a big deal for her. So that was, like, a big letdown for her. But yeah. you had to follow your dream. Mm -hmm. You had to follow your passion. Yeah. And she allowed you to do that, mm -hmm. you know, to be free and creative. Yeah. The creative that you are. And and, and do you have any regrets about not going to school? No. Mm -mm. Not at all. <laughs> No. The crazy thing is, I'm actually thinking about going back to school, but not for that. Now. Well, oh. not for what I was in school for. I actually want to go for nutrition education, but that's okay. a whole other thing. But no, I don't have any regrets. I felt like, and at the time, too, we were doing a lot of, like, studies and, like, research on people who had college degrees. And, like, I think that we were studying, like, during a recession how they couldn't find a job or they couldn't make up money. And so at that time, I, I, my mind was already made up, and that just kind of, like, you know, since we were studying that and writing papers on that, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm dropping out. Like, <laughs> I'm good. I can make money. Okay, mm -hmm. so how was that? How was that? Did would Was that an easy progression? Was that an easy process when you decided, when you made that decision, I'm mm -hmm. not going to go to school, you know, I'm just going to pursue my passion of doing makeup? It was easy for me. I feel like once my mind is made up about something, whether I'm right or wrong about it, my mind is made up. So um, when you made yeah. your mind up mm -hmm. at that point, what was your next step? Um, so I dropped out, and so my next step was to um, attend aesthetic school because I knew that I still needed, like, further education. I just knew mm -hmm. that college wasn't the education that I needed for makeup. So I dropped out, and then the next year I signed up for aesthetics. So that was their first time offering an aesthetics program in Florence. And so I signed up, and I went because I knew that if I wanted to, like, work in a salon setting, because I, the rules were very, like, kind of unclear and new around that time um, when it came, like, pertained to makeup artists, actually being a makeup artist, about whether or not you had to be licensed, but I just wanted to be licensed. So I went to aesthetic school, and then I ended up getting my license after that. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and the rest is history, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. So so tell, tell us about this... Um, Feature in Vogue magazine, the prestigious Vogue magazine. Not the prestigious Vogue magazine. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I, um, so I ended up meeting the bride. I met her like some years before. I think I had reached out to her because she was the former Miss South Carolina. Oh. Okay. And yeah, so she reached out to me. Like we had developed a relationship then, and she reached out to me to do her makeup for her wedding. It was in Charleston, and I didn't even know this was going to be featured in Vogue. Um, so I didn't know that was going to be a thing. And so one day she ended up like texting me and told me that I was involved and I was just like, Oh, I'm involved. <laughs> but the thing is, I don't know. I don't know that I see it. How everybody else see it. I'm just like, I don't know. What, what do you mean? Vic? That's I, you big, know what it is? I have a, a hard, deal. I'm, I'm learning to celebrate things like that. Okay. I'm having a hard time learning to celebrate. So I'm, I'm learning. Okay. So it's like, I have moments of excitement about those things, but it's just like, I don't know. I don't think I was excited as excited about it as everybody else was. I don't know. <laughs> that, that's pretty crazy, though. You would think that you would be. This is your. This is part of your dream. This is part yeah. of your journey, and mm -hmm. this prestigious magazine. I'm being featured in it. And how is that not a big deal? You're just mm -hmm. humble. No, I don't think it's that. I don't no? think it. 
I don't I don't know. Like, I don't think it made me feel any different. But I don't think it's humble. Well, I mean, I felt more excited about, like, doing my clients sometimes than yeah. I feel about, like, that feature. Like, I forget about it sometimes. So it's really? actually funny. Yeah, it's actually funny when people be like, yeah, you was in Vogue. I'm just like, I was in Vogue. <laughs> <laughs> I was. Yeah, so I'll... I'll I'll make it a note to talk about that more so and celebrate it more. You As you should. Yes. Because that's a pretty big deal. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your clients and, and how you feel. How satisfying mm-hmm. is it when you take a canvas, yes. a blank canvas, so to speak, mm-hmm. you know, and you do your Picasso thing? Mm. How, how does that feel when you look at your client afterwards? And you see how much joy yeah. it brings to them and that you created that. You did that. Mm, it makes me feel good. It reminds me of why, like, even in the moments that I have, like, doubts or, like, I don't know, the moments where I'm not feeling, it makes me feel, I don't know, it makes me feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Not only that, but it's just, like, the relationships that I've built, the stories that women share with me, like, just how it made them feel better about themselves. It boosted their confidence. That yes. just, yeah, it warms my heart. It warms my heart. It made me feel like I'm doing the right thing. And so when you do, do you know which direction you're going um, when when you're applying, when you're just beginning to, to start the makeup journey with the client? Do you mm-hmm. have a particular idea in your head about how you want this person mm-hmm. to look after you're done with them? So everybody's different. So I have some clients where it's more of a collaboration where it's like, okay, well, this is what I want. Because I feel like a lot of times it's not always about what I want or how I feel. Like, I want you to feel good. So even if I feel like, girl, I want you to have a full face glam. I want you to, you know, have on these big eyelashes. I think you should go bolder. If you're not going to feel comfortable in that, then I don't want you to do that. So sometimes it's more of a collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. And then now I do have some clients where they're just like, girl, I don't care. Do do what you want. (laughs) Honestly, like. So it gives you the freedom to do it. And they're good with that. Mm -hmm. And it makes me feel good because it's like I know that they trust me. They trust you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. and that's a big deal because you're look look at this face mm-hmm. okay, and she did it. I trust her. I don't mm-hmm. have to tell her anything. She knows exactly what to do, and I love her for that. I love and you. and I'm 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 so proud of you and and your journey and your move from Florence to Charlotte. Let's talk about that. Okay. So when you decided I'm not going to school, I'm going to do this makeup thing. I'm going all in with it. Mm-hmm. How did you decide upon Charlotte? Um, for me, at the time, it was between Charlotte and Atlanta. Um, I don't really have a real reason. I just felt like they were just bigger cities than Florence. And I just knew I didn't want to be in Atlanta. <laughs> okay. So that's what so made you me chose decide the mini Charlotte. Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's start small. And then, too, I didn't want to be, because it was like my first move, I didn't want to be too far from home. Right. Um, because at the time, my sisters were pregnant, and then my grandma was moving back. So I wanted to be somewhere where I can get, you know, back to Florence if I needed to. But Cause yeah, you're a family I feel like, girl. I am. I love my family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, since that was my first move, I was like, let me decide on Charlotte. And I felt like if I moved to Atlanta, I was going to have to learn how to fight. So, and I don't know if I know how to fight. <laughs> so funny. I, I really I don't know if I know how to fight no more. And I don't, I mean... Atlanta's just a little aggressive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, but yeah. you know what? Charlotte is a little mini Atlanta, right? Mm-hmm. Don't you think so? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's busy. And um, your clients there, they love you. I've, mm-hmm. I've been to your studio in Charlotte. Talk about your, your, your beauty stu- studio in, in Charlotte. Oh, I love it. Um, so I moved in there about two years ago. Um, so I started out in a salon suite. Um, and that was like a full full salon, so that's how I met a lot of people. And then um, one of my friends told me that they were opening up a new salon suite um, in Noda, mm-hmm. and I wanted to like you know just try it out. Yeah, I just wanted to try it out, and, and you love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. So your work is described as a profound expression of identity and emotion. How do you approach a new project or client to ensure you capture? their essence in your makeup? I really just ask them what they want. And most of the time, my clients give me the, oh, I just want to look natural. But everybody's version of natural is completely different. So I usually I ask them, like, show me a picture of what you what you mean by natural. Mm-hmm. And then I'll start asking them more specific questions, like, do you like bolder lashes? How do you feel about brows? You know, how do you feel about, like, blush? Because, you know, everybody is different, and I kind of tailor it yeah. to them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. have you ever had to just come 
out of it and do it over when somebody was just not pleased with the way they looked when you were done? No, not okay. like not like do it over. I just, I mean, I've gotten feedback uh -huh. um, about like you know preferences and things like that, but I've never had to do anybody's face over. Tell us about a particular memorable experience where your makeup artistry significantly impacted someone's life. Significantly impacted. Did somebody walk out of there like in tears? Oh, I can't believe you did me. I've had a few of those. I've, yeah. I've had a good bit of those. I've had to like clean some tears up and stop some stuff because they loved how they look. Um, so yeah, I've had I've had plenty of those. I've had brides like even now keep in touch with me afterwards and send me gifts. I'm like, oh y'all send me gifts? Like, Aww. yeah. So it's that's been, because you do what you do. Yeah, and some brides now I'm like a part of their family. So I'm like, I've been one of my brides in particular since I've been to Charlotte. I was. Doing her, I met her during her engagement, so I did her engagement photos, I did her wedding, and then I did her maternity pictures. Okay. <laughs> so, and then as of recently, um, her and her husband are opening up their own dentistry practice, so I did some makeup for some for those photos. So, you know, I got to meet the little baby, and Aww. yeah, so that was special. So, as as someone who has accomplished so much and mm -hmm. achieved considerable success in what you do. How do you keep yourself grounded and continue to find inspiration in your work? Mm, that's interesting. So I'm actually at a weird place right now where lately, to be honest, I've been feeling uninspired, but I feel like that's only because I'm not necessarily proud of my work, but that's because I haven't taken class in so long. Cause I like to continuously be like a student. I want to continue to learn and grow. And I feel like honestly, since the pandemic, I hadn't taken any like hands-on classes and it's like driving me crazy a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, to, you know, and I've realized that my relationship with like makeup artistry is like any relationship. You got to continue to find new ways to fall in love with it, that's to spark true, your creativity yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm gonna be taking some more classes this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to that and just learning new skills and, you know, getting better at what I do. Because I don't feel, that's why I'm not feeling like I'm the best yet. Because I, I feel like there's so much to learn. There's so, like, I have so much, I still have so much growth. Like, as great as you think I am. Yeah, <laughs> and I do. Yes. I, I want to be able to, every time I come back, like, I, I've brought something different to the table. Like, I, you know, or, I don't know, I just want to, I want to continue to grow. I want to always be a student when it comes to this. And I feel like I haven't been a student in so long. So what tips would you give an aspiring young person who mm -hmm. is considering the world of makeup? Ooh. So I have a few. So number one was continue to be a student. Um, and you have to go outside of, so I think Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of those are amazing. Like I learned a lot of things off of there, but I think, you know, when you want to enter into what was important to me, to me is like actually learning from people who are actually working mm -hmm. in the industry, who are actually booking the kind of clients that you want to book, you know, getting the jobs that you want to get, like learn from them, learn what they're doing. Because it's just like a lot of times, when, especially if you're watching like particular influencers, they're only showing you what works for them or their complexion and stuff like that. And it's just like you, that doesn't work for everybody. Right. So, yeah, you have to work with people who are in the industry. Um, I think it's important to find your signature style, what works for you. Because sometimes, you know, the trendy things are beautiful and they're cool. But I also think, you know. My clientele now is more like timeless makeup or, you know, soft glam, and that works for me. So you have to find what works for you. Um, I think it's also important to have, like, mentors and good people. And yes. I also think it's important to be a good person. Right. <laughs> yeah, I think it's important to be a good person. Um, and just remember that we're in this to serve. Because I feel like a lot of people now approach the industry with a me, me, me. Um, well, I mean, what you should be, you know, think highly of yourself, but I think people don't serve enough. Yeah, and, yeah. You, and you probably run into those that have attitudes like mm -hmm. when you're giving positive feedback yeah. or, you know, they're kind of take that Yeah, take a lot of people aren't receptive to, yeah. you have to be receptive to feedback because a lot of times it's not, even though I might feel, like I said, like even if I feel like, well, I want this on you, I want this for you, you don't feel comfortable in that. Mm -hmm. And I want you to feel just as, like, I want to be proud of my work. I want you to be just as proud, too. So you right. got to kind of take yourself and your pride out of it. What does protecting your mental health look like to mm -hmm. you when you're deep into what you're doing? You know, and if it's your passion, you can tend to get lost in your passion. And you need time to find you. 
Mm, that looks like a few things for me. Mm-hmm. So I've learned to set boundaries. I don't answer my phone after a certain time. I don't respond to messages after a certain time. Okay. And just learning that it's okay to turn down certain jobs if I don't necessarily feel aligned with it. Um, I think that is an important part of protecting my mental health. Um, I think now, since I moved to Charlotte, I've learned to take time for myself. Good so for just you. doing things that I enjoy and just also taking care of myself um, internally and externally. So, yeah, like you see, I do the juicing and I try to eat as healthy as I can. I try to work out, try to make sure I prioritize those things um, before mm-hmm. I come and take care of clients and take care of me. And, you. you know, going to sleep. <laughs> okay. Going do, to sleep. Does your does your body tell you when you need to do that? Oh, all the time. Do you keep pushing yourself and you say, uh, look. Mm. I think Vic, sometimes there's a sit down. Yeah, there's a time to push and then sometimes there's a time to be like, mm go to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Go to sleep. But yeah, I feel like a lot of times now I get more done if I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. And that's how you keep your mental health in check cuz that's so mm-hmm. important. Yeah. You know, cuz we have a tendency mm-hmm. to like I said just push 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 and go 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 because there's so many expectations that we put on ourselves mm-hmm. where when we're in this entrepreneurial you know, yeah, space, yeah. and we 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 can't take our feet off the brake. Mm-hmm. You know, we got to go go go. But it's so important mentally to check out when you need to and take time for yourself. Yeah, for sure. And I'm so proud of you for doing that. Thank you. And you're glowing, by the way. <laughs> One final question. Yes. Here at the tissue box, we like to get your tissue box moment. Mm-hmm. A moment in your life where maybe tears turn into triumph. Maybe your lowest moment where you had to grab a tissue. And how did you get out of that? Um, So one of my, I guess, lowest moments was when I first moved to Charlotte. I moved with somebody and that didn't work out. So... Like, crazy enough, one of my um, friends that we had just met at the salon, um, I think I shared a little bit about what I was going through, and she ended up letting me stay with her. And it was just weird because that was not what I planned at all. And so I think then I battled between whether or not I should move back to Florence or whether I should stay. Um, And I was I did not want to move back to Florence. My grandma was like, I think you should just come back home. Like, I was like, no, I'm not moving back. So I slept on her couch for, like, some some months before I ended up getting my own place. And it was, I would like to say that that was, like, a terrible moment, but I think it, for me it was a transformative moment. Now that I look back on it, like it wasn't like as bad as I thought it was. But when you mm-hmm. were going through it, you didn't see it. There were days where I I didn't see it. There were some days where I did. Okay. So yeah, but that, it was just we- a weird time because I'm like I'm staying with somebody who I literally just met, and I'm in a new city. I don't I didn't and I didn't even know anybody when I moved to Charlotte. So yeah. At at that time, did you feel defeated? Yes and no. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I felt defeated, like, because I, I I was struggling. I'm like, I don't, like, I'm still working to build clientele. I'm staying with them. So that's completely different, staying with somebody that, you know, I, we just met. And mm-hmm. we're building a relationship. We're building a friendship. And so that was weird. But, I mean. It had to be a little uncomfortable. Yeah, at times for sure. Mm-hmm. And then, too, when you're a grown woman, staying with other grown women is weird. <laughs> <laughs> or it can be, you right. know, especially when it wasn't really planned. There were times where I felt defeated, and there were times where I realized, like, this was supposed to happen. But, yeah, I don't look at it like, it's so hard for me to say that that was a low. Because at the time, I did feel like it was my lowest. But now, I don't, when I look back on it, I'm just like, mm, I don't think that was my lowest. Like, you had a place to stay. You had food. You had things that you needed. You built clientele still. You, you know, you still managed to, like, thrive in spite of, like, things not working out the way you thought they would. So And yeah. eventually they did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Triumph in the end. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get help where you're not expecting it from. So having, like, you know, somebody who I consider a sister now, you know, help me during a time like that, um, that meant a lot to me. And, you know, honestly, since moving to Charlotte, I've been shown that a lot, that, you know, people are here to help you, people are here to support you, um, and people are here to love on you. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And you are beautiful. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So are you. (laughs) How can folks find you on social media? Um, You can find me on Instagram and TikTok at beautyisvictoria underscore. And I just recently made a new salon page, um, and that is under Beauty is Victoria Studios, where I showcase my work in the salon. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank 
you. And once again, thank you for taking time to visit us today. Thank you for the beat face. <laughs> thank you for inviting me. And, and you always do a phenomenal job, and I love you. You know thank that. You. I love you. And you are family, and you are always welcome here at the Tissue Box. Thank you. I feel honored. This is my first podcast. Well, no, this is like my second podcast, but this is like my first in person with all the things. So I love it. <laughs> the things? Yeah, like I'm dressed up. I got on clothes. Like... You know, Whitney Victoria styled me. <laughs> You're so funny. Let me say that in the camera. Whitney Victoria styled me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, we love you here at the Tissue Box. I love you back. Okay. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Tissue Box podcast. Be sure to follow us at thetissuebox.com. And until next time. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to subscribe, leave rating, and a review. And let's stay connected. Visit thetissuebox.com to join our mailing list. Until next time.